So we set out to make a video about how and when to air down on the trail, and uh, this is what it's come to. All right, everybody's always wondering how they can increase their traction on the trail, right? We're out here on a local trail, this part's not necessarily hairy, but further up, it gets pretty gnarly. We're riding solo today, it's snowy, it's icy, all that good stuff. Got the Toyo Open Country RTs, not really gonna worry about you know, how they're gonna perform on stuff like this, but especially on rougher terrain, I wanna give them every advantage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how this tire reacts at three different PSIs on this exact same spot. So I run these at 35 PSI when I'm out on the road, you know, daily driver, all that good stuff. And again, dirt roads, couple rocks, a little bit of mud, I wouldn't change that at all. But if I know I'm gonna get into some like slicker terrain or some tougher terrain, I wanna go ahead and air down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this down about 10 PSI and show you how it rolls over this exact same rock and kind of deforms the sidewall. I wanna make sure that airing up, airing down on the trail is super simple. So I got my air tools kit here and the packing cube. This side has got like gloves, plug kit, stuff like that. And then on this side, this packing cube is great for wrangling a super useful piece of gear. And this is my end deflate. This makes it super easy to to air down to a specific PSI really quickly. And then the cool feature is you can actually equalize pressure between two tires. So if your compressor goes down, or maybe you know something like uh, you need to air up a tire that is really low, you can use this to kind of like limp your way out. All right, so let's drop that tire down to about 25 PSI and roll over that same rock. Another reason I like the Indiflate is it's got these really nice clamp-on connections. So you don't have to throw anything on, especially if it's like dirty conditions. All right, so you see, you got the PSI here. All right, so pretty close to 25. We are gonna roll back over that same rock. And what this is gonna do is increase the contact path. So you can probably see, especially as I rolled up on this rock, that it's like definitely deforming more and letting more of this main tread pattern hit. Plus, if you're in like the muck, you know, softer conditions, these side uh, treads, this tread block that, you know, wraps all the way down to the perimeter of the side wall here is uh, gonna get more contact. So again, 25 PSI, if I was gonna hop back out on like some gravel roads, stuff like that, would definitely feel okay, you know, running this. Um, especially with like these 16, something I like is you get way more flex in the sidewall. Uh, also, if you're just on really rough, like gravel washboard, maybe going a little bit faster, this is gonna absorb just a little bit more uh, if your suspension's not tuned for that kind of like fast-paced travel. So in that first shot, it wasn't very clear on camera the difference that I was making. And uh, we definitely thought that when we got to lower pressures, it would be obvious. We are gonna go down about 10 more from 25 into like the 16, 17 range, and then hit that same rock one more time. All right, so we're actually gonna stop here about 17 because it's pretty impressive at how much uh, that this is kind of like bulbed out on the sidewall. We're gonna hit this rock one more time for a visual representation. We're at our last one, 17 PSI, and it's actually really funny because Logan's kind of guiding me up, telling me when to stop. On the other two tire pressures, I could actually feel this rock. This time I couldn't feel it at all. Uh, so it was way harder to gauge. Again, total overkill for this trail, especially this section of this trail, but this was a great chance to kind of show how much it deforms the tire at this low PSI, helping to increase your footprint. At 17 PSI, it still wasn't very clear on camera. The difference that I was making, Luckily, Rick has a great idea that I think is gonna help us out. On that trail, there's no really like rocky sections. There was just a few rocks here and there. So we have decided we're gonna build this like small test course and we're gonna roll over this pile of rocks at the same three different tire pressures. So you can see how it affects the tire's footprint, the flex of the sidewall and all of that good stuff. Okay, so that showed it a little bit better, but still it's not super obvious how much flex you get between the three different PSIs. One of the factors for that, that's a mid-sized truck on six-ply tires, so we decided what we needed was a bigger truck. 
Okay, so to put some numbers to this, my ZR2 is about 4,700 pounds from the factory, a couple hundred pounds of stuff with the tent, the topper, the bedside, stuff like that. Matt's is over 9,000 factory, and like he said, at least a couple hundred more pounds of stuff, and they're on the same six-ply E-rated tires. So let's see how his street pressure, which is... 65 in the winter. Yeah. It's not a Tonka toy. Right, like yeah. A, an adult truck. This is over double mine, so PSI. So what we're gonna do is run over... <laughs> We're going to go these rocks at 65 PSI uh, mat street pressure. Then we're going to half that, which is approximately what my street pressure was at. And then we're going to go down uh, to close to my mid-grade PSI and see how the tire reacts. Yeah. All right, so there was our baseline. And you might have noticed that Matt's truck actually like pushed one of the rocks forward uh, and the tire didn't flex at all. So we're gonna drop him down to around 30 PSI and reset. We'll call it, yeah. Calling that 35? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna go ahead and drop it down close to 20. You can already see the sidewall flex. Again, the funny thing is it keeps like smashing the rocks down. So let's see how much more kind of footprint we get uh, with 20 PSI. One thing I noticed this lowest PSI wasn't so much obviously the flex of the tire, but just how much like smoother it made the rock pile feel. Like I actually didn't even know when I was up on it and Logan was like giving me this. Uh, so I'm curious to see what you think because this is like a third of your, you know, everyday PSI. Yeah, so after we were out on the trail, you had the really good point about like the overall weight of the truck and like the weight of the tires. Uh, so I think this showed it a lot more, but then you also like more or less said, this is not necessarily your like strategy, right? I, so in a lightweight vehicle like that, in a six ply tire, an E-rated tire, yeah, like you just don't get the footprint that you think you do. They're just not heavy enough. Typically people have super heavy tires on a truck that just doesn't weigh that much. Yeah. And yeah. the other thing is, you know, you start looking at, the skinniest tire you can get with the heaviest sidewall you can get. Yeah. Well, shoot, they'll just stand up with not much weight in them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it takes it takes some weight to flatten them out. I mean, this has obviously a little more weight and flattens them out a little better, yeah. but it's still like if you were in the woods, I mean, you'd have to take this down to probably 20 or 18 to yeah. to really make an impact. Now, again, in the sand, it probably it probably helps some on the lighter truck with the uh, heavy sidewall tires, but yeah. I think most of the time you've got a whole lot of tire under not a lot of truck. Yeah. And yeah. it's not near as much benefit as people think it is. The tall skinny ones, they'll just stand up. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, that's their job really. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, like that's what they're supposed to be doing Yeah, is standing up and finding the bottom, not floating on it. No, I think your truck really showed, for one, our test course wasn't as sturdy as we thought. <laughs> and, uh, and two, uh, that it uh, makes a huge difference, obviously the different PSIs, even without taking into consideration that my street pressure is like half of yours. Right. With the uh, Multimatics on this, they are a little bit more responsive, so I don't necessarily air down. Yeah. Because there's like gravel roads and there's like forest road two track where right. in my old truck with a much slower responsive uh, suspension, I would air down, you know, to like 25 just so it didn't like jar, Beach is, jar my Beach teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I think, yeah. you know, you run in washboards and stuff like that. Yeah. If you're, you know, there's a point at which you're make, trying to make up for suspension yeah. with tire pressure pressure yeah. and that may not be the best uh, the best plan either yeah, yeah, yeah. honestly yeah might be better off to actually have suspension and yeah well i mean i i will say like if you put you know 35 12s on a land cruiser and drop them to 18 pounds you'll get some spread out on on them too because yeah, yeah. there's enough sidewall to roll yeah to roll a little bit but yeah. like i said i think that when you get into the tall skinny stuff that's made to get to the bottom and not float on the top yeah. then you know you're almost yeah. I just, I don't see the big advantage to, to spending a bunch of time airing them down because yeah. you want them finding the bottom. Yeah. So hopefully that just kind of goes to show you that it's not just as simple as like airing down for more traction. Uh, there's a lot of factors, tire weight, vehicle weight, tire size. And like Matt said, you know, what was the tire designed to do? Tall, skinny, designed to get the bottom of the mud. You know, if it's a much larger, like wider tire, it's designed to float on top. And so kind of think about, you know, is this serving your purpose or are you kind of like fighting against the design of the tire and of your rig? As always, let us know in the comments what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Air up, air down tips. So drop a comment and as always, thanks for watching.